The Student Information Office at OSPI is providing school districts with a new measure of student performance called Student Growth Percentiles, or SGPs. In this video, you will learn about SGPs and how to interpret them. Student Growth Percentiles are a normative measure of student growth. SGPs quantify the growth an individual student made in one year relative to all other students in Washington State with a similar score history on state assessments. What do we mean by normative growth? We're referring to the amount of growth a child makes in comparison to his or her peers. For instance, when a child goes to the doctor's office, his weight and height are measured. The doctor can tell us if the child's growth in the last year is typical. That is, is he growing the same, less, or more than other children his age? Often this is expressed in percentile terms. The child's height may be at the 35th percentile, which means that the child is taller than 35% of other children his age and shorter than 65% of children his age. Normative growth is the basis for student growth percentiles. Let's look at an example. Anthony was a fourth grade student last year. On his MSP reading assessment in the spring, he scored a 381. In the previous year, his third grade score was 344. There appears to be growth in that his score improved, but relative to what? How do we place Anthony's growth in context? Let's start by first examining the test score distribution for all students across the state in Anthony's cohort. We can see there is a spread of scores from the below basic range up to advanced. Anthony's score of 344 is at the lower end of the distribution in below basic. Now, let's look at Anthony's third and fourth grade reading scores in this context. For simplicity, we'll show a standard curve. We can see that in third grade, 2011, he scored 344, or below basic, and in the following year in fourth grade, he scored 381, moving to the performance level of basic. Although Anthony did not meet standard in fourth grade, his score does show an improvement in performance. However, it remains unclear if this is an average or below average amount of growth. We want to understand how Anthony has improved. We attempt to define above and below average growth by placing Anthony's growth in the context of a comparison group. Last year, when Anthony was in third grade, he scored 344. 75,000 other third graders in Washington took the same test in reading. Anthony was just one student among them. Of all these third graders in the state, many others scored a 344. Let's call this Anthony's comparison group because these students had a similar level of academic proficiency as Anthony. Anthony's comparison group is defined solely on their state assessment scores, not on any other characteristics. What we want to know is, relative to his comparison group, how well did Anthony perform in the next year, the fourth grade? Here we can see the distribution of fourth grade test scores for Anthony's comparison group. You can see that this is an overall lower performing subgroup of students relative to the statewide distribution. The highest scoring student met standard, but the middle scorer of Anthony's comparison group is on the border of below basic and basic. Recall that in this year, Anthony scored a 381. Although Anthony is below standard in the state distribution, he's definitely above the middle score within his comparison group. Analyzing the data more closely, we can see that Anthony scored higher than 80% of the students in his comparison group. This translates to a student growth percentile of 80. OSPI has classified low growth as between the 1st and 33rd percentiles, typical growth as between the 34th and 66th percentiles, and high growth as between the 67th and 99th percentiles. In Anthony's case, his SGP of 80 would be considered high growth. Next, let's move from an individual child to the school level. How can we characterize the performance of a school based on the individual student scores? The Washington Student Growth Model takes all the individual percentiles from a school, ranks them from highest to lowest, and takes the middle percentile. This gives us a median number, which we refer to as the Median Student Growth Percentile for that school. So in this chart, assuming this was the total population of the school, the Median Student Growth Percentile is 44. It can serve as a single number for describing the growth of a school. An average can be influenced greatly by very high or very low scores, so a median can give a better overall picture for a school. The median SGP shows that half of the students had growth above that level and half had growth below. Most of us are familiar with the four assessment performance levels and the typical school metric of percent meeting standard. Student growth percentiles add another tool for looking at performance. Instead of simply looking at a snapshot of the percent of students meeting standard on the statewide tests, we now have a metric that looks at the growth of individual students over time. This concludes our introductory video on student growth percentiles. Thank you for watching.